While the media would have you to believe that this was just a fight amongst the teens, I'm going to show you some footage and then I'm going to tell you exactly who it may be that was found in the Miami Mall and it would explain everything to you. You would start to understand why we've been seeing the things that happened in Las Vegas and now Miami. And yeah, we happen to be at that mall. Start hearing all this commotion outside, sound like fire, firecrackers or something. I'm saying, I, next thing I know, it's like crazy. We just see all these people running, fat, fat, fat chicks, old ladies, like I'm talking about moving. I look back, it looked like a big shadow, but it was solid at the same time, like a few a few shadows, but they were solid at the same time. And them, it's, it almost looked like they was coming our direction, like they was chasing us, but they was disappearing and reappearing closer. I'm like, yo, what? We start really moving. Next thing they start, the police is gonna get all the people that ran out the mall. They like trying to detain these people, whatever. A lot of people saying, why didn't nobody film and all that? When that type of shit is going on, like some paranormal, nobody thinking about no phone. I'm saying everybody going survival mode. Nobody knows, of course, it could be fireworks, teens fighting. I, I don't even know if I'm allowed to share this, but I have gotten information through an indirect source from someone who is in the FBI, who has been watching my videos and testified about how the things that I'm saying are accurate and how they even have these bodies. You know, there's a set of creatures that have been documented and testified of throughout every civilization of all of history. Who could it be? Sure enough, the Nephilim. Now, before you react, before you go crazy, Gabe, this is, this is just another one of your conspiracy theories. Check out what the Bible said, and then we can start to understand who indeed this could have been. And as real as people are accepting that the spiritual realm is, it's still not something that everyone just wants to be open and upfront about. And you'll understand why when you see this. Again, I can't even believe I'm making this video, but it, it really is happening. Again, 10 years ago, everyone said UFOs were fake. UFOs aren't real. And now we have congressional hearings almost every week about them. Happened when men began to multiply on the face of the land, daughters were born to them, that the sons of God, now sons of God doesn't mean human sons of God. No, it actually uh, is interpreted as a reference to the royalty or rulers possessed by fallen angels. These, these fallen angels saw the daughters of men. They were beautiful and desirable. They took wives for themselves, whomever they chose and desired. Now everyone says, well, Gabe, the flood happened after that. So obviously the Nephilim don't exist anymore. Well, when Jesus casted out those demons and coincidentally, all of a sudden they all wanted to go from the pigs into the ocean. You ever, you ever wondered why? Well, what if when the flood happened, the spirits of Nephilim were reigning over the territories, even on the land uh, before the, the mass oceans were here, right? And so they were reigning over the territory. They had authority. And when the flood happened, even though the sea and the waters were above them and the spirits were disembodied from their, their original creatures, they still occupied territory over the waters. That would explain a lot of the reasons why we have these marine spirits, why there's special things happen on cruises, interesting things happen in the ocean that you just can't explain away. And that would perfectly make sense as to why we still don't have footage of these creatures in a human body, why they're not just giants, but that they are an interbreed. They're a mix between an angel and a human. I'm not saying for sure that what happened in Miami was Nephilim 100%, but all evidence is pointing to the likelihood of Nephilim being spotted and the government is going to do everything they can do. Now, I will also say I'm not even, I, I don't even know if I'm allowed to share this, but I have gotten information through an indirect source from someone who is in the FBI, who has been watching my videos and testified about how the things that I'm saying are accurate and how they even have these bodies in their own headquarters. They even have evidence pointing to the Nephilim that they, they don't want anyone to know about. And again, I don't know if, if you never hear from me again, you'll, maybe you'll know why, but a flood did happen. But then we also still had giants. You still had David and Goliath after the flood happens. How do we make sense of this all? Well, the good news is that in Christ Jesus, through his blood, he has given us authority over all principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world. And if you really want to understand the spiritual world, you could be an atheist right now and you would still start to understand the way in which everything is around us. The amount of evil that exists on a day-to-day -day basis is just beyond imagination. And you start to get to that place where you realize you living on your own self can do nothing. You on your own understanding can get nowhere. Why don't you just say yes to the possibility? Why don't you just take the risk? What if the Bible is the truth? What if God spelled all of this out for us before time even began? And what if 
He has given us authority through his own son, Jesus, compared to every other faith, compared to every other religion. He wasn't just a God that was so high and almighty and never touchable and never reachable, and you might as well just hope and pray that one day you would be good enough for him. But instead, God came down and humbled himself and became like us and paid the price we deserved, died on the cross that we deserved to die on, went to the hell that we were headed for, and fully became us so that we could fully become him. It's the best news you could ever possibly imagine. And now Jesus, it's like capture the flag. When you go into the enemy's territory and you take the flag and you run out of it, telling everyone that you've won. And some people believe you and others at first are a little bit skeptical. They're like, man, did you really win? Did you really get the flag? But let me tell you, the only ones who experience the victory are the ones that just take the risk and rejoice and stop uh, playing games. I actually encourage you, doubt, doubt. People say, I don't, I don't believe in God. I don't believe Jesus won the victory. I don't believe I'm victorious. I don't believe I have authority. Well, what if you just believed in Jesus as much as you believed what you saw with your physical eyes, as much as you believed what you felt with your physical body? Because if anything is real, if anyone has faith, it's your choice to believe or not believe. There's a reason why Jesus prayed, Father, your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. He didn't say, God, maybe your will would be done. No, he knew how his words were the rudders of his life. And that's how you need to be with your words. You've got to pray Father God's will from heaven down to earth and speak his words of life over everything you're seeing. And you have authority. Jesus is now seated at Father God's throne. And he's not just there coincidentally. He's not just a stranger. No, Jesus is the son of God guess what? You are seated in Christ at the right hand of Father God. But two years ago, <laughs> many people, if you've watched the channel before, you have testified of this, but I was actually basically dead in a coma for two and a half weeks with the entire back half of my skull cracked. And I actually left my body. And I can tell you of firsthand experience how real Jesus Christ is. He's more real than you could ever imagine. And when you stand before him, you have an opportunity to not be a stranger you have an opportunity to not be an orphan, but you can actually be adopted by his own blood, but you can actually be family where God looks at you and you're not just an outcast. Instead, you're a son, you're a daughter. That's the opportunity that you have. When you say yes to the love of God, you step into the place that he's given you and you start to understand your authority. By the way, if you want to pray any prayers, Ephesians chapter one and Ephesians chapter three, are some of the most powerful prayers. I, I actually encourage you to be praying those prayers. And in fact, if you see this sweatshirt, quick side note, it's heaven to earth. Just wait till you see the back of it. It's really awesome. And we're giving away free shipping right now and a great coupon. The link is down in the description below. Things don't make sense until you start to clear it all out, until you start to understand the word of God, until you start to understand that you are a spirit being. And the reason you face such depression and anxiety and doubt and thoughts that just make you have no confidence and you don't even know what you're doing with your life and wherever you may be watching this video, the reason is because Satan understands how great of a plan God has for your life. And he is so jealous of you. He saw God. You see, Satan, <laughs> more than anything, Satan wanted to be God on his own and he saw God take the very dust of the earth. And the only creatures that God ever made in his own image and in his own likeness, and in God took the very dust of the earth and said, I'm not just going to have a servant. I'm not just going to have a slave. I'm going to create a son, a daughter of mine. Do you understand how weighty that is? Do you understand how important that is? You have a little understanding of how amazing it is when you're the son of a father who ranks in the world, if you know what I'm saying, who does well. The son of LeBron James doesn't even have to try out for a basketball game because as soon as he talks about his father, LeBron, he's in the gym. You guys get what I mean. What if I told you? that Father God has given you the opportunity to be his child, but not just a faraway child. You can be as close to God as you want to be. He loves you so much. You can have joy today. People ask me all the time, Gabe, why are you smiling? Why is there such joy? Why? I mean, why are you even still watching this random white guy from Texas talk about Nephilim? The reason is because there's someone in me and his name is Jesus and he is joyful and light and victory himself. And he's just using me to speak to you today. He's just using a vessel to reach you. It's because once you encounter Jesus, man, you just, it's, it's, it's even better than a lottery. It's even better than the best job. It's even better than the best opportunity. He changes everything. He's the only reason I'm even alive today. He healed me from that coma and he brought me back and I'll never be the same because I know who he is.
Anyways, there was a really interesting encounter that this man had with a Nephilim in, in Canada. And then all of a sudden he's missing for the next couple months. And again, I'm not going to say it was for sure the Nephilim. I'm not going to say he for sure saw a giant, but I am just going to say it, it's at least plausible. It's at least something to think about. It's at least something to look into. And if you want to find out what happened, click right here.